Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here in the Home Weather Office with an El Nino update for May 22nd, 2023. As always, these videos are made on Monday, specifically on latest Nino conditions happening in the Eastern Pacific. So as always, let's get right into the video since there is quite a bit to talk about as there has been in last Monday's update. So this is, of course, made by NOAA, by the Climate Prediction Center, as of May 22nd, 2023. So here's a look at what we're going to be looking at. Our summary, our recent evaluation and current conditions, our Oceanic Nino Index, Pacific Sea Surface Temperature Outlook, and much more. So our first thing is our summary. And as always, there is a El Nino watch that is currently issued. So that means there is a pretty good chance we're going to have El Nino conditions by June and July. And so therefore, um, the Climate Prediction Center has issued an El Nino watch since we are looking at normal to above average sea surface temperatures across much of the Pacific Ocean, and there is greater than 90% chance we will have an El Nino within the next month, in the next couple of months or two. So our recent evaluation of equatorial Pacific sea surface temperature departures, they have been negative um, basically throughout December and uh, before that, they have recently become positive. And we can see that clearly reflected in our whole Mulver diagram showing you uh, the dates on the left side. So this is June of 2022, uh, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, and May right here. So if you want to take out a slice of the equatorial Pacific, this is where they're taking out a slice from, from 120 degrees east to 80 degrees west in longitude. And therefore, these anomalies have been warming up. Now, there has been some interesting facts about this. There has been some cold water upwelling recently due to stronger than normal trade winds, which we'll look at here in just a second. But don't, dis uh, don't get fooled by the fact that El Nino is going to bust. I think we're going to still have one since there is a lot of upper ocean heat content still below the surface. So when we take a look here at another uh, portion of the PowerPoint here is there is a thumbnail, okay? For reference, this is uh, what, what we're looking at right here, okay? And all the different basins are numbered. So El Nino 4 index is this yellow squared area. It's highlighted. The El Nino 3.4 region is our um, kind of our black outline box, okay? Our El Nino 3 is in red, so it's a solid red indicator. And then our 1 plus 2 region here is in white with the black box outline. So this gives us an idea which region is seeing what. So the El Nino 4 region is roughly about 0 0.3 degrees Celsius above normal. So only two points away from the departures there for it to be declared an El Nino. The El Nino 3.4 region, it has warmed up still. Now it's at 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. The El Nino 3 is 0 0.9 and the Nino 1 plus 2 has cooled off dramatically. A couple of updates ago, we were looking at sea surface temperatures that were ranging between 2.5 to almost 3 Celsius, now down to 1.5 Celsius. And that is our first indicator to see if El Nino is going to sputter out or if it's going to continue to develop. So sea surface temperature departures over the last uh, four weeks have been in such in a way like this. So 1 degree Celsius here, uh, 0 0.5 Celsius extends out to 150 degrees west in longitude. So given the take that, we can see we have a very weak uh, El Nino or a very warm neutral phase uh, ongoing. So we're going to skip over to this, the central and eastern Pacific upper ocean, 0 to 300 meters. So this is basically the subsurface. How warm are the waters below the surface of the ocean and how high is our upper ocean heat content? So in other words, we're pretty warm, okay, but you know what makes this interesting is that we saw this last year at this time, 
Okay, back in early June, late May, we have had a huge warm-up. I'm wondering if something like that is occurring again, and we might be on the downtrend for the rest of the season. It's very hard to say right now, since we have a very warm Atlantic to deal with that might counteract with El Nino here and prevent it from getting any further stronger than what it can become if the Atlantic was cooler than average. On that for another video, but otherwise right now, sea surface temperatures below the surface are or subsurfaces are pretty warm roughly about 1.1 degrees celsius above the long term average is where we're putting this at right now the thumbnail for reference clearly illustrates with what we're seeing all right and we will look at this in more detail uh in a couple more um tabs here but right now, sea surface temperatures are below the surface, are running about 2 to 4 Celsius above normal. We will see if that actually makes its way to the surface. And if it does, we will have a stronger El Nino to look at potentially by uh, July or August, perhaps. Uh, we have seen some upwelling recently increase, just not far below the surface, roughly between 100 to about 150 meters, because of the trade winds have been slightly stronger than average, which has led to some upwelling of these deeper waters below the surface. So it is it, we're going to see how this all plays out. It is now a little bit more on the table if we or aren't going to see an el nino it's just we just don't know exactly but likely chances we will it might not be even as strong as what we first thought we were first thinking maybe a very strong el nino maybe perhaps a super el nino but that might be going down in my predictions we're probably looking at now more of a moderate to strong el nino than say a strong to very strong one so the uh, anomalous trade winds have picked up a little bit here. We can see uh, slightly above normal in the last 30 days. So some anomalous three knots of trade winds have been represented here. This has correlated with stronger than normal um, westerly winds found at 200 millibars, which means the walker circulation is strengthening a little bit. And we will see if that walker circulation is able to strengthen so much so where we do get a or, or we try to get la nina conditions back again boy if we can get a la nina back with the very warm atlantic i'll tell you it would it will be a, a story for another video because we would be looking at a very busy atlantic hurricane season but again that is still up in the air right now so we're going to skip over here. So our upper ocean heat content evaluation, our Kelvin waves. We have had a recent Kelvin wave in progress uh, headed into the Eastern Pacific right now. Not much more Kelvin waves to speak of as of um, early May to mid-May, which is quite surprising. We have kind of halted the warming for right now. But we'll see if things do resume. Right now, our trade winds have re uh, are stronger than normal uh, uh, from the international dateline over towards the eastern Pacific, as we note here, with those trade winds running about five to uh, about five to ten meters second per uh, yeah five to ten meters second per uh, I can't even tongue twister. I know it off the top of my head, but blues indicate stronger trade winds. Oranges and reds mean weaker trade winds, which means more upwelling. All right, the MJO has been pretty active, as we see here. Um, certainly some uh, positive yeah, yeah, or negative amounts of convection going on. So more enhancement over the international dateline suppressed over the eastern and western Pacific at this. Actually, no, that's kind of... The western pacific where we are seeing some of the upward motion all right um when we take a look here at our historical el nino and la nina episodes we're still at negative 0.2 this will update next month as you can see here so just, i'm circling that in for reference so what we will look for is um these numbers to go into the positive territory but the way it looks now i think el nino is kind of not developing rapidly or as quickly as we thought before. But for a little while there, you can see those anomalouses very warm. They have cooled down just a little bit now, anywhere between about 1 to 1.5 Celsius in the Nino 3 region. 
Not so much in the Nino 3.4 region. We're waiting for that warmer water to slosh westward and develop this El Nino more significantly. But as it stands now, it looks like it has leveled off. It has plateaued and we have not seen any further warming of the eastern or, um, or the central equatorial Pacific. The, uh, the very strong cold PDO is still in progress right now with another shot of northerly winds here coming off the west coast. And so there's going to be a lot of upwelling here of sea surface temperatures. And with that being said, a very warm Atlantic right now, which makes me more thinking to believe we're probably going to have a fairly busy season. But we'll have to see what um, June and then what July brings. And then we'll know for sure probably by late July, early August, if we're going to have a really busy peak of our Atlantic hurricane season. So looking at the climate forecasting system version 2 forecast in for the Nino 3.4 region, this is a look at our latest anomaly projection. All right. So uh, in a few videos ago, by like late April, early May, we were thinking we might be up in here, 2.5 plus. But recently, these numbers have been trending downward. So it's very interesting. The climate or the seasonal predictability barrier still in full swing. And it is possible that this could even level off and bottom out right over here, barely at 1.5 Celsius. But we are still thinking we're going to have more warming in the eastern equatorial Pacific. But the chances of us hitting this portion up here on the top of the cone or the ensemble guidance remains highly uncertain at this time. More so from this black line further down is probably where we're going to head. So between 1.5 to 2 Celsius in the three-month mean average is projected by late November into early December, um, which again would be a moderate to strong El Nino, possibly a very strong one at the very most. But there's only a 30 to 40% chance of that occurring as of this video. So now when we take a look at our subsurface temperature anomalies, again, that's this is basically that same version that we looked at during the PowerPoint, but this is showing you the subsurface temperature anomalies ever since mid-March. So we can see here that the more redder colors, the darker red colors indicate more warmer than normal sea surface temperature anomalies. And we can see how that has all progressed over the last, say, three or four weeks, how um, this warm water over here in the central and western Pacific has not really surfaced yet. So with those trade winds continuing, it's going to be very hard to see this make its way to the surface. We want those weaker trade winds. Um, trade winds have been stronger over the eastern Pacific, is, which is why this anomalous warm water here below the surface has not made its way to the surface. But still in all, we are looking at sea surface temperatures right now hugging between the 26 to 28 degree isotherm index uh, right around the five or the 50 meter depth in the surface all the way up to the surface in itself. But what we're looking for is more of this water to slosh westward or eastward and really it's not doing that as quickly as what we first thought. And that's, again, because of the upwelling, because these trade winds are keeping this warm plume of water towards the west and preventing it from sloshing eastward, which would otherwise help our El Nino quite well. S pretty surprising to see this, though. The Southern Oscillation Index has been acting very differently and I mean, this would really lead it to a developing El Nino and it's pausing. The Nino is kind of plateauing despite our negative phase of the Southern Oscillation Index here. Very negative here. Uh, our latest contribution here, negative 43. So I'll explain this in just a second with what this means. All right. But right now in the last 30 days, it's been at negative eight. The last 90 days, it's been at negative 3.52, and it's dropping very quickly. I mean, it's coming down really, really fast, fast enough to where we could have El Nino conditions in the last 90 days to cooperate with the atmosphere, probably by early to mid-June if this keeps up. So we can see over Tahiti, the pressure has been lower than average, and over Darwin, it has been higher than normal leading to a daily contribu uh, contribution of negative 
That's very, very negative. I mean, it's not like negative nine, negative one or whatever it's been very negative over uh, for a while and we can see um the daily contributions here um highlighted in these bars really going up and down up and down and right now it is very negative and that means our trade winds are weaker than average but we just saw they are stronger i'm thinking though if the trade winds are weaker more than likely in the western pacific which is why there has been a lot of warming over there recently and it has not really made its presence known over the eastern pacific that should happen maybe soon so the pressure differences are measured from darwin to australia over to tahiti which is over here so these two locations is where the pressure data comes from for our Southern Oscillation Index, which we see here. So that's basically this. So what you wanna see is the pressures over here to be lower, okay, and the pressures over here to be higher. So when you get the greater the difference here, you get weaker trade winds, you get more upwelling of warmer water or downwelling, we should say, and all that water is able to slosh from the e uh, west into the central and eastern Pacific and help to develop that El Nino quite nicely. Now the question is, are we seeing any of that anytime soon? Well, yes and no. The latest European model does illustrate we are seeing uh, a weakening of the trade winds right now. That's in orange here. So we uh, very weak trade winds, some westerly wind bursts, but still on the ensemble forecast from the European model does indicate we are going to have some enhancements of trade winds, but there will be times when the trade winds do relax. And then maybe towards early June, we might start seeing a, a slackening of the trade winds again over the central and eastern Pacific, which would otherwise lead to a, a lot of upwelling of cooler water but with the trade winds weakening uh, this will likely allow for more warming the G gefs ensemble also indicates this uh weaker than normal trade winds from about the international date line over towards the western pacific over indonesia uh, might see some weakening trade winds here towards um, June 1st and beyond, but it is highly uncertain if that's actually going to happen. Again, we will keep you updated uh, when that gets closer. But for right now, on the GEFS forecast, does call for stronger than normal trade winds to continue over the Central and Eastern Pacific for the time being, at least through the very end of May. Some stronger trade winds do return possibly for the equatorial portion of the Atlantic for the main development region, which could help um, keep the warming um, or should keep the sea surface temperatures from warming too much. All right, well, that is gonna do it with this video, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. It really means a lot. I will have more weather content coming to the channel tomorrow. Stay tuned for more, okay? I might even make a weather forecast today. I doubt it. My day is very busy today. But anyways, thank you all for tuning in. I love you guys a lot, and I'll be back with you more, likely tomorrow, with more weather content.